What's up, watchers? C.T. Reese here, and happy September. This is an especially fun one because there's a Friday the 13th coming up, so what better time than now to do my first ranking video, making my way through all 12 entries in the Friday the 13th franchise, ranking them from worst to best. And I'm really surprised with how these Friday the 13th movies ranked out. Going in, there were a few entries I thought surely would be in my top three or four that, well, didn't quite make it. And there's one in particular I remembered enjoying much more the last time I watched it. Of course, Friday the 13th is one of the classic slasher franchises, and it's had its highlights and its lowlights over the years like all of the slasher franchises. But overall, I will say every movie on this list does have value. There's not a movie here that I found myself hating, and I'm sure if I redid this list in six months, the rankings would probably be totally different. So let's get into it. Kicking off in 12th and last place, we've got Freddy vs. Jason. That's right, the movie that featured two icons of horror comes in dead last for me in the Friday the 13th franchise. And as you'll see as this list unfolds, I don't really have a lot of love for New Line Jason, and Freddy vs. Jason is the entry I found least appealing overall. The teenage characters just aren't very likable. The dialogue and the insults are very, very early 2000s, and that's impossible to get away from. There's also CGI blood all over the place, and well, CGI blood looked pretty awful in 2003. It also seems like this movie doesn't understand its antagonists at all. Now, I'm not going to bother getting into my issues with Freddy's portrayal since this is a Friday the 13th listing, but when it comes to Jason, first off, not bringing back Kane Hodder, straight up unforgivable. Next, this iteration seems like a completely new character. One of Jason's defining characteristics is that he's afraid of water. I don't know where the writers got this from. We see Jason killing a number of teens in the lake, and he never seemed scared of water in the previous entries. It just seemed so shoehorned in as a way for them to make their plot work, and quite frankly, it's just kind of bullshit to me. He may get the blood, but I'll get the glory. Now, moving on to 11th place, this one was a huge surprise. I thought it was gonna rank a lot higher, but it's the 2009 reboot of Friday the 13th. I just couldn't get into it after watching the rest of the franchise. It felt very much like the filmmakers here copied certain parts from the first three Friday the 13th movies and then tried to cobble them together with what their idea of a more modern feel would be, and it just didn't work for me at all. Despite this one's attempts to make me care about the protagonists, I just never did, and some of the dudes in this one are just far too brotastic for my tastes. You got perfect nipple placement, baby. I also didn't like this version of the Baghead Jason design. He looks more like Dark Man than Jason to me. I think they'd been better off just using a burlap sack. Also, this Jason seems to have a penchant for long distance kills, and I prefer the up close and personal style Jason kills. I found the idea of Jason's underground tunnel system very weird, and I couldn't get into the final girl trope subversion either. I just don't buy the idea of Jason kidnapping someone and then holding them hostage for weeks. Lastly, the killer cut, which is the version I watched, it's just too long for a Jason movie for me. Say hi to mommy. In hell. But enough reboot complaining. Let's move on to 10th place. We're going to stick with New Line Jason. This time it's Jason Goes to Hell, The Final Friday. And again, this feels like a movie that just doesn't really understand what makes a Friday the 13th movie great. We had very little on-screen time with the actual Jason Voorhees, and instead, we spend most of the time following around various possessed victims. I think Friday the 13th works better when it's just more straightforward. This one gets really convoluted with the Voorhees family background and the Creighton Duke stuff. I don't know if he's a bounty hunter, doesn't matter. Anyways, the score in this one is also very odd. It sounds like something from a low budget Charles Band direct to video movie. Now, that being said, there are some absolutely wild looking death scenes here. The heart eating is super gross. There's some gross possession deaths. If you're looking for gnarly kills and you're not really worried about 
a convoluted story, there's really nothing wrong with Jason Goes to Hell, because, well, at least it brings the gore. That thing's in the basement with Jessica's mother. Holy mother of God. All right, let's get away from that new line, Jason, and move on to ninth place. I thought this one might actually come in dead last coming in. It's never been a favorite of mine to rewatch. That's Friday the 13th, part seven, The New Blood. This one, it actually was a pretty fun rewatch. I just, I've never been able to get into the psychic girl versus Jason plot. Now, the kills here, they're very tame by Friday the 13th standards. They've gotten away from a lot of the gore at this point. Now, don't get me wrong, it's great to see Kane Hodder playing Jason here for the first time. He brings a presence to the role that's intimidating, but when compared to some of the other movies in the franchise, especially some of the later entries, there's just not a lot of follow through on these kills. Also, I just hate this version of the lake because it just didn't look at all like a lake in a wooded area in New Jersey. It's not super surprising. They filmed it in Alabama, but it's actually jarring to me how different this version of the lake looks. It's going to be a great birthday. Thomas. Now, very appropriately, coming in eighth place, I've got Friday the 13th, part eight, Jason Takes Manhattan, which could have also been called Friday the 13th, part eight, Jason is a stowaway. Now, it's clear at this point Paramount was grasping at straws with the franchise. The movies were still profitable, but they were running thin on ideas. We've got a different psychic girl doing battle with Jason, so apparently they weren't entirely over that idea, and once again, none of that part of the plot really works for me. This one does edge out a new blood, though, just because it's got better kills, and we at least get a taste of Jason in a new environment. Now, I'll never tire of the Jason versus Julius boxing match culminating in Julius getting his head literally knocked off. And of course, the brief fight scene in the diner that features Kane Hodder as Jason throwing stuntman Ken Kissinger through the mirror. And Ken, that's who would replace Kane Hodder in the inferior Freddy versus Jason. Now, the scenes in New York, they don't last very long, but they're all pretty cool. And you get the one with Jason taking his mask off in front of the punks in Times Square, and that's an all-time iconic scene, I think. You don't understand, there is a maniac trying to kill us. Welcome to New York. All right, moving on to seventh place. This is a movie uh, I think a lot of you were probably wondering how it hasn't shown up yet. It's Jason X. What can I say? I'm a sucker for sci-fi, even sci-fi of questionable quality. So Jason in space, it's just going to resonate with me. And by the time Jason X came around, Leprechaun had been to space, Hellraiser had gone to space. Everybody knew that if you were going to space, your franchise had jumped the shark, so you might as well just have fun with it. And I think that's what Jason X tried to do. That's why it's my highest rated New Line Jason film. And while this is really nothing like a true Friday the 13th movie, I think it embodies the fun side of the franchise. You've got a lot of over-the-top kills here, probably most notably is when Adrian gets her head frozen in liquid nitrogen and then smashed off a countertop, but it doesn't end there. There's folks getting sliced in half, virtual violence on some fake camp babes, and well, he even causes a spaceship to crash into a space facility, killing untold numbers of people. It's stupid fun. Turn your brain off. You get uber Jason. And, you know, I, I know it's not good. It just scratches a certain itch for me personally. And I know it's probably too high of a ranking, but I don't care. I just enjoy Jason X. Hey, you want a beer? Or do you want to smoke some pot? Okay, we're finally making our way to the top half of the list here. And coming in sixth place is an entry I thought would surely be in my top three, but it didn't make it. And this one's Friday the 13th, part two. I love Baghead Jason. I've got a lot of nostalgia around part two. There are absolutely some great kills in it. I mean, who doesn't love watching that wheelchair roll down the steps, right? Now, the setting, it still looks great. It's back in New Jersey like the original, but it's also very clear when watching this one with a bit more of a critical eye that it was put together in a very short period of time after the unexpected success of the first Friday the 13th movie. The most apparent thing here to me that's missing is special effects artist Tom Savini. The kills in part two are just a lot more tame compared to some of the other Friday the 13th entries. I think it pulls away a lot rather than showing what's happening because they just didn't have someone of Savini's level of talent working on this one. 
And the characters here, they also feel fairly shallow. The girls are particularly thirsty in this one as well for some reason. I'm not exactly sure why, but it's really noticeable. What do you want to play for? Position. Coming in at number five, I've got Friday the 13th Part 3 in 3D. Now, of course, this one took production out of Jersey, so we're never going to see that same Crystal Lake again. Part 3 also moves away from the camp counselor angle. This time, we've got the group of kids. They rent a house, and they're going to party by the lake. Clearly, this is a fruitful setup. We'd see it again in Parts 4 and 7. I'd also say Part 3 is where we start to see the campiness of Friday the 13th start to emerge. You've got the stoner couple. They're clearly only intended for comic relief. There's Shelly spending most of his time either putting himself down or committing immature type pranks. Of course, the motorcycle gang from town, they never really feel all that dangerous. And then you've got, of course, the 3D effect, just adding more to the campiness, especially when the kills are utilizing that 3D, like when Rick gets his head crushed or Vera gets shot with the spear gun. But of course, this movie is most famous for giving Jason his now iconic hockey mask, and that's a pretty big deal. Oh shit. Oh, shit, it's right. Let's get out of here. Now, moving on to fourth place, we've got the fifth entry in the franchise, Friday the 13th, A New Beginning. What can I say? I like Roy. But seriously, I think this is a much maligned entry in the franchise that still has a lot to offer. With Jason killed off in part four, the franchise went back to its murder mystery roots and kept people guessing as to who this Jason was. Now, earlier I said I was a sucker for sci-fi, I'm also a sucker for giallo-like plot lines involving mysterious serial killers that turn out to be some random character the audience sees for like 30 seconds towards the beginning of the movie. The fifth entry of the franchise, it's so much more excessive, it's sleazier than the ones that came out before it. Not only is there a lot more nudity, but this one really goes out of its way to introduce people just so they can be killed. You got these 50s kids in their leather jackets, the best, though, for me, it's got to be Demon. The poor guy is just trying to look 80s cool, and instead, well, the burritos don't treat him too well, and he gets impaled while he's on the toilet. I even find the Ethel and Junior side story to be entertaining. Those two just crack me up. <laughs> you big dildo. Eat your fucking slot. Okay, now we're into the top three, and this is getting serious. Now, I was actually surprised this one ended up so high on my list, but I just had a great time re-watching Friday the 13th Part 6, Jason Lives. It's so much different from Part 5, but everything about it works so well. The filmmakers knew they had to bring Jason back because audiences demanded it, but they also knew that that was a pretty ridiculous premise, and this movie smartly leans into it. This actually may be my favorite intro slash title card of the entire franchise, the James Bond ripoff to kick it off. It's absolutely perfect. It lets you know right up front that this franchise is no longer trying to take itself too seriously. We're going to have a fun time here. It's got one of my favorite sequences of the entire franchise in the RV when Jason smashes Nikki's face into the metal wall. Then he takes out her boyfriend and flips the RV just so he can stand atop it like some kind of righteous conqueror. The whole thing, it just freaking rules. And when you add in the fact that this one also includes Alice Cooper doing the theme song, it's also the culmination of the Tommy Jarvis trilogy. It just deserves a place in the top three entries in the Friday the 13th franchise for me. Some folks have a strange idea entertainment. All right, getting into the top two. It's getting really tough now, but in second place, I've got the originator of the franchise, Friday the 13th. Now, like part five, I love the mysterious killer angle of the first entry. Unlike part five, this one wasn't trying to be particularly sleazy. It was just trying to be a good slasher film in the vein of Halloween. But instead, it went on to almost create its own subgenre of the slasher film, that being the camp killer slasher. Now, the filmmakers were also fortunate to have Tom Savini doing special effects here, so this entry includes a couple of very famous kills. First, you've got Kevin Bacon's death in bed when he gets the arrow shoved through his back and out his throat. Those blood spurts will always be iconic. And then, of course, there's the Mrs. Voorhees killer reveal that was shocking, and then 
you follow it up with an even more shocking decapitation kill. Alice definitely turned out to be a true badass final girl, and it's a shame that after surviving this one, she gets killed off so early in part two. And of course, who could forget the surprise ending when Jason leaps from the lake and pulls her under the water? Even if they never made another Friday the 13th movie, this one would still go down as one of the slasher greats. Don't let her live. I won't, Jason. All right, you made it. This is it, my number one ranked Friday the 13th movie in the franchise. It's Friday the 13th, the final chapter. And this one just has all the hallmarks of the franchise that I'm expecting. You've got the flashback intro that so many of these movies utilize. And while they're no longer shooting this one in Jersey, at least the set looks the part. And really, compared to the previous three Friday the 13th movies, this one feels like it had an actual budget. The characters are great. Crispin Glover in particular steals most of the scenes he's in. And, well, who doesn't love that famous dance, right? We also get Corey Feldman here playing Tommy Jarvis for the first time, and it can't be discounted how cool it was to finally see someone able to take out Jason, and it's not an adult or a horny teen, but it's a nerdy middle school aged kid. Die! Die! And on top of that, the final chapter does the right thing and brings back special effects artist Tom Savini, who is missing in parts two and three. He lets everyone know that he's back with a vengeance with the very first kill in the final chapter, and we get to see all of it in full view of the camera. So, yeah, like I said, when I think of a Friday the 13th movie, the final chapter is what I think of, and honestly, it's not even a bad place to start for a newcomer to the franchise, since you do have that flashback intro that cribs footage from the first three films and really brings the audience up to speed. Ted, hey, Ted! So there you have it. Those are my rankings from worst to best in the Friday the 13th franchise. And whether you agree with me or you think I'm a clueless dolt whose ratings suck, I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments. And if you enjoyed the video, please don't forget to hit those like and subscribe buttons because I am not done with Friday the 13th yet this month. When I was doing the rewatch, I also scored each and every on-screen kill. So I'm going to be coming out with a few videos going through my top ranked best kills throughout the entire franchise. Next week, we've got round one. That'll cover the first four Friday the 13th movies. You're not going to want to miss it. So until next time, don't forget to keep it rad.